The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Nick Chase here from Morantis, and I am here with Sean O'Meara. We are going to talk to you today about flexibility and repeatability and how they do not have to be mutually exclusive. Sean, if you would give us the next slide. Thank you. So uh, let's talk a little bit. Uh, Sean, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself in a minute, but just to remind everyone, we've got about a 45 minute overview and then we're going to do some Q&A. We're here to talk about uh, the Maratis Cloud Platform. So Sean, introduce yourself real quick and then we'll move on to what we're going to talk about. Hi, Mike. Good day to everybody. Uh, my name is Sean Amara. I'm the field CTO for Marantis. Uh, I have a responsibility for product management and strategy within Marantis. Um, and I hope to talk to you this morning and give you some insight into how to better manage your environments and what we can do with MCP uh, going ahead and what we've released with our latest uh, releases in the last quarter. Okay. So should we just drive straight into this, Nick? Let's just drive, let's just dive straight in. Okay. <laughs> so let so. me let me just do a little bit, of, let me do a little bit of housekeeping. So for those of you who have been to our webinars before or any go to webinar, that little panel will look familiar. You can go ahead and submit your questions there on the questions panel. We will hold them till the end. Uh, at the end of the webinar, you are going to get uh, a link to the video and the slides and all that. So no, you don't have to take notes, but there may be a quiz later. So just remember that. <laughs> all right. So go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> Good. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, as we all know, in a modern enterprise, the diversity of workloads that we have to deal with on a daily basis um, is getting more complex uh, as time goes on, with more companies driving towards digital innovation, those workloads are putting an extreme amount of pressure on the infrastructure within, within our enterprise and cloud environments. Um, it's this constant balancing act between the requirements and the use cases that we need to support and how we tune and manage the underlying infrastructure required and move forward rapidly with that infrastructure so that we can continue to support the innovation of our businesses. Um, alongside this, we always have the real world constraints of the type of infrastructure, investment in infrastructure, and maintaining the cost of that infrastructure without it becoming a runaway and constantly having to purchase new hardware, software, and other components never mind the operational costs, to continue to, to support those unique requirements. Sorry. So Marantis has developed the MCP product, which we've been running with for just over two years now. Our product is designed around providing flexibility with repeatability. We achieve this cap this by utilizing our drivetrain and stacklight products. Drivetrain provides the continuous um, optimization and tuning for your in infrastructure environments, providing that flex flexible infrastructure, but still in a controlled and manageable way. And then providing those insights and the deep understanding of what your environment is doing at any time, and that capacity planning information needed to continue to grow. Um, the benefit of all of this combined provides for us that structured continuous improvement, as I mentioned, in a controlled way that allows us to meet the changing needs of our business and business applications. So, Sean, the, before, before you go sorry, on, let me, do, mm. let me just ask you this question. So, would you say that this allows us to be more receptive to the requirements of the applications on a continuing basis? It allows us to be to adapt to the requirements of those uh, applications on a continuous basis. So we're able to be flexible, but still provide all those controls, the necessary controls, to ensure that all of those applications are delivered and that infrastructure is managed with a level of quality expected within organizations. Um, so that 
the ultimate end customer or the consumer of those applications can place reliance on um, those applications working as expected and ultimately the trust in the businesses presenting those applications. Got it. So as part of this idea, we're presenting the concept of flexible infrastructure. Um, in the modern world, our infrastructure is made up of a huge number of very complex components that all have to be integrated. Um, but at the same time, we need to understand what those components are doing, where they are, um, how do we manage the change and the extremely high rate of change that companies need to follow to adapt. Um, but at the same time, as I've said, providing that control over that change without hindering innovation. So the MCP, we're presenting the concept of flexible infrastructure to help you manage all of these diverse components, um, both software and software-defined infrastructure and hardware within your data centers. To achieve this goal, we are presenting the idea of tuned infrastructure um, and tuned stacks. And I'll cover that in a bit more detail later on. But to harness this latest innovation in infrastructure, we need to go through this life cycle of tuning the infrastructure, observing the results of that tuning, understand how we predictably repeat those changes and that creation of that, in, of that infrastructure, as well as the more wider distribution of that infrastructure. No, no cloud is centrally located. We need to distribute workloads across the world, um, sometimes in multiple locations, in multiple time zones. So we need to be able to capture that innovation and then repeat. So to achieve this with MCP, we have the model-driven architecture that is drivetrain to handle the lifecycle management of all of these components which allows us to define, deploy, and manage all of our infrastructure components. And then the Stacklight toolset, which allows us to observe and predict what we're going to need to do within that environment. And ultimately, if and when we do have issues, we can then do that deep troubleshooting. And I'll go into some of the capabilities that we are presenting um, as part of that toolset. Through Drivetrain, we run a, are able to manage your infrastructure as code. I've mentioned the model-driven management, so everything is defined as code through a model which defines all the interactions and all the components of our solution. We're able to support rapid innovation in a controlled way, ensuring that whilst you need to innovate and move forward, you still are able to put those controls in place that ensure that the appropriate people and the appropriate quality checks are in place that when you deploy new infrastructure, you can do so with a high level of confidence. So therefore, we can be able to test and validate all the changes into the environment, provide a clear understanding and view on your infrastructure, which is crucial in this day and age to understand where things are and what it needs to change to support your, your application infrastructure. And then also, and I've mentioned change control a few times, but put that change control in place, but without creating artificial barriers through the form of red tape or manual processes that just delay innovation. Ultimately, providing you the flexibility to define your infrastructure the same way you define your application architectures today. Stacklight. Covered a bit of that, Stacklight provides us deep operational visibility of our environments, either at a glance, so giving us that quick view, yes, I'm healthy, no, I'm not, or where I'm potentially going to run into problems, and then that much lower level detailed capacity information and ongoing information about the existing usage of your environment, providing you the data necessary to support that innovation and support the quality of those applications being delivered to your customers. The concept of inf infra as code is extended here through the direct deployment technologies from, and management technologies from Drivetrain, allowing us to, at the same time, configure and implement the Stacklight components. 
and thereby observe the ongoing change and management of those components as well as usage of the infrastructure by our applications. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about what's new uh, with the latest release of MCP. Uh, we've made some extensive updates in our core infrastructure technology, um, our drivetrain. We've enhanced and added new features to drivetrain, and there have been a large number of updates to the way Stacklight works, as well as what we can monitor and view with Stacklight. And then as a little aside, we also in the last week moved to new offices uh, in the Bay Area. And that's the view of our front door. So lots of change happening here at Marantis at the moment. Right, so let's talk about flexible infrastructure. So major changes that have come within our flexible infrastructure space today, we have included support for OpenStack um, Pike. We currently also support within Drivetrain the deployment and management of Mitaka and Okata. Um, our next release will include further OpenStack updates, and we're constantly innovating and adding to our OpenStack releases to provide for more OpenStack support um, for both Neutron and OVS and other areas. Within the networking space, we've released full support and integration for OpenContrail 4.0, now known as Tungsten Fabric. Um, this integration is both with, op with OpenStack for NFV and um, supporting DBDK and SRIV, as well as extensive support for Kubernetes, um, with more capabilities and releases coming up soon. Kubernetes, we've released our managed enterprise version of Kubernetes 1.10. This is fully integrated and managed deployment of Kubernetes um, with all the components you require, including ingress controllers and um, load balancing and various other components to make Kubernetes not just a quick install, but a fully managed environment that you can then upgrade, control, and provide that flexibility around at scale. A major component of our most recent release has been our integration of Keycloak Suite to provide single sign-on across um, all of the components of MCP, as well as OpenStack. This will allow you to more easily integrate your Kubernetes and OpenStack environments into your existing enterprise security solutions, vastly simplifying the onboarding of customers, as well as controlling and role-based management in the future of your uh, management and operational tasks. So let's dive a little bit into drivetrain. The goal of drivetrain is to manage your environment in a clear and understandable way. To address this, we treat your infrastructure as code. All components of the solution are defined as software um, all the logic is included within the code base, so that it's, everything is accessible and understood to everybody. The interactions and the components of the various components um, is also defined within that code base. And all management is done through drivetrain. We're able to then push those code updates and configuration elements into the flexible infrastructure, um, including both the complexities and all the interactions needed for both Kubernetes, OpenStack, environments. And I must point out this includes the entire infrastructure related to those components and more. So we can manage the switches, routers, and all the other uh, dependent components within a infrastructure or data center environment necessary. Sean, does that mean that you know, nobody's going in and manually making changes to the infrastructure? Always the danger within any environment. The goal here is to prevent people from making those manual changes. All changes are pushed through the management solution. Um, if somebody has made those manual changes, we are able to detect that and ah. report on that. Uh, the goal here always to be manage things as code, do things in a controlled way, um, and as always, you'll have fewer problems later down the road. The biggest 
advantage of defining everything as code is that in the event of a failure, in the event of somebody having made an unauthorized change, it's very easy for us just to roll over it. So remove that unauthorized change uh, and continue. In the event of a failure, there's no need to try and recover, we just rebuild, um, which is a much more rapid, uh, you know, assuming that we have that disconnect between the, the appropriate levels of uh, abstraction between the workload and the infrastructure. Ah, thank you. Sure, thank you. So a good point here about the flexible infrastructure is having flexible infrastructure without visibility on top of that infrastructure uh, leaves us in the dark. Uh, the need to understand and maintain and contain in many ways what's going on within our infrastructure is extremely important. And that's where Stacklight comes in. The OSS tool sets within Stacklight provide us that visibility, that alerting, and that ability to react to change within our environments, both planned and unplanned, uh, in a clear way, as well as to provide the reporting and the detailed information necessary for us to plan and troubleshoot our environments. That information is filtered, uh, provided in a human re readable format, as well as in machine readable formats. We provide tool sets that you can create rules around to react to events based on fairly complex uh, event management. And as such, we can then create pipelines, some of which are included out of the box within Drivetrain, to at, perform actions within your environment. Uh, this allows us to increase the levels of automation, once again, in a controlled way. Supporting your business, supporting the drive for open source technologies, and supporting the innovation necessary to continue to innovate within the application market today. So moving on, a little bit more detail about how Drivetrain works. And I've covered at a high level the infrastructure as code concepts. Many of you will be familiar with Git and Garrett. Um, Git being a very open and common code storage repository, Garrett being essentially a change management tool. Combined with the reclass model, which is that definition of your infrastructure in a model form, including all the configuration elements, as well as the logic to deploy, the deploy and manage the components of your environment. Those two pieces combined with Jenkins and triggers allow us to then manage our environment based on the change managed features within Garrett and combined furthermore with CVP pipelines, which I'll talk about in a second, we're able to validate change before and after to ensure that the environments are running as expected. Within Drivetrain, we utilize SaltStack as our logic engine, which provides us a very powerful way to make change within the infrastructure environments, but also to determine what changes have been made potentially out of band to what we expected. We're also then able to do things like dry runs to validate what change will be made before we make that change to see what potential impact it could have. The whole drivetrain environment can manage multiple cloud platforms. So everything from a dev staging and production environment to multiple production environments or for a single platform providing you that visibility. The big new feature um, alongside a number of quality features has the release of the model designer, which is in beta format, limited beta format at the moment. This provides for a quick start ability to create your reclass model for your environment from a graphical interface in a controlled way, decreasing the time taken for you to get started and create your environments. Uh, model designer will be going under extensive work over the next couple of uh, months, and we hope to do a full release of that in the near future. To talk a little bit further about where we're going and what model designer really brings to the party for us is the idea of tuned stacks. The best practices of organizations across the world 
that have deployed clouds and all those learnings have been distilled down into these models, which we refer to as tune stacks. All the portable components and all those configuration elements and all that understanding of how to scale, what we need to do to scale, and how to correctly configure and deploy environments to provide for stability at scale um, have been distilled down into these tune stacks. The tune stacks can then be abs absorbed by the model designer. You're able to make the changes necessary for your environment, obviously the clear metadata such as IP addressing, uh, network configuration information, uh, secrets and others that allows you to create models that are reliable and can be deployed rapidly with a very short learning curve to build environments and distribute new environments without the, without the need to constantly try and tune from scratch. It's giving you a very stable platform to start on. These are opinionated deployments. These are from the Mirantis learnings over the last several years, five, six years of deploying clouds at some of the biggest organizations in the world that have run OpenStack in production, um, as well as the learnings more recently from our Kubernetes deployments and our application deployments in very large customers. Um, the tune stacks include NFV tune stacks, application and web service tune stacks, um, as well as a number of other tune stacks for things like video and other areas. So, Sean, so these are these are tune stacks in that they, like you said, they're very opinionated. They take into account all the things that we've learned over the million years that we've been doing this. But they're just a starting point. You can then customize them for yourself if you want to. You don't have to, but you can. Absolutely. Yeah. They're a starting point. They provide us the baseline to kick off in your environment. They give us, as I said, a solid platform, a place to start so that we're not learning. You don't have to go and learn every single one of those many hundreds of dependent components uh, and understand how to tune each one of them. You're able to start from a point of stability and move forward from there. Um, and that's where we bring back in the message of flexibility and the understanding that whilst we have very strong opinions, on the right way to do things, we still feel that you need that flexibility to, to cover your needs in your unique application environments. Got it. So let's talk a little bit more about Model Designer. You can start with best practices, as we've mentioned, the standards, the configurations. We provide the opinionated combinations of things that are required. So if you want to deploy a DPDK, we understand what the dependencies for DPDK are. If you want to create a complex environment with multiple SDNs, we understand the dependencies of what's required to make the control work at scale. So we're able to then set up control for you so that you can continue to tune it for your environment. Or for example, the best way to deploy RabbitMQ to support a thousand nodes and uh, OpenStack. The model designer allows you to capture your unique requirements. So do you want Solometer with a a um, AODH, or do you want LBAS uh, as an OpenStack component? How do I install those the right way? Well, we've already done that. You just provide us with the combination of elements that you want. You provide the IP addressing and the secrets information, and we'll generate that baseline model for you to start on. From there, you are then able to manage your environment and start to tune it to your needs, and we provide that flexibility. You can then extend that baseline model and allow you to manage all the other components that you could possibly want within your environment. So, a new feature for us um, as part of Drivetrain is the development of the cloud verification pipelines. Verification is an essential component of any environment. Um, if I don't know that my environment is functioning the way I expect it, not just from a monitoring point of view, but actual every element of that environment, for example, creating a VM, destroying a VM, creating new containers, creating new pods, um, depending on the environments, 
creating new tenants are functioning as expected and are completing as expected, I have no idea whether the environment is stable or not. The verification pipelines allow me to create a baseline that I can immediately get a view of the health, sanity, and performance of my environments, make, keep that, and then compare it before and after change. I can even go far, so far using the CDP pipelines to do fairly destructive testing, for example, to validate the HA of the components uh, within the infrastructure management. What this means from a change and flexibility point of view is, I give you the power to change and tune your environment through the flexibility of drivetrain, but we also need to have that visibility to make sure that before and after a change, my environment is still responding the same way. So as part of the CVP, we include a set of pipelines that will run the jobs for you, as well as an extensive suite of tests covering functional testing of the environment, generalized sanity checking of the environment, um, HA, making sure that everything's working, and part of the HA testing, as I mentioned, we can do destructive testing, and then performance tests. When I create a 1,000 VMs, do they create in a reasonable amount of time? Are there bottlenecks that I need to be aware of? Has my change broken something somewhere unexpected? And that is a big part of the cloud verification process. Right. So, a bit more depth. The cloud verification process, the config and all the tests are stored as per everything else, as code within the infrastructure. We're able to then define the test process that we would like. That creates the CVP pipeline. Those pipelines will run a huge number of tests, starting with Tempest jobs to check on functionality, rally jobs to check performance of OpenStack, PyTest jobs, where we have a huge number of test frameworks and test jobs that have been created. We can run SALT tests on the environment. I mentioned earlier that SALT allows us to do a sanity check to ensure that what's defined in the model is what's configured in the environment. We can do that quickly and provide a report. We can run extensive testing for Kubernetes and Docker. Um, all of this based around pipelines that can be modified, adjusted uh, as to your needs uh, based within Jenkins jobs and pipelines. All of the visibility and reporting that comes out of that can be presented through Stacklight. And that provides us that view into our environment alongside our general monitoring capacity management information to provide that confidence uh, on the stability of our environments. Let's talk a little bit about Stacklight. So I've mentioned Stacklight. Stacklight, like everything else Morantis does, is based on open source tool sets. So from a logging point of view, we're utilizing FluentD, Kibana, and Elasticsearch to collect and analyze in real time all the logs coming from our environment. For those of you who are familiar with OpenStack and many of the open source tools today, they often use very complex multi-line logging, either from uh, Java or Python code. That information can be quite complex to process. Through the combination of Kibana Elasticsearch, we're able to analyze that complex information, cross-reference it across uh, multiple platforms, so the controllers, the compute nodes, and all the other components, routers, switches, to provide information and an easy way to correlate all that information. From a monitoring point of view, we're utilizing Telegraph to collect that information, and Prometheus to scrape that, provide that, sort it, uh, and provide insight into the events and capacity information being collected, and Grafana to present that information in an effective dashboard that can provide either a management, very high-level management view, and we can then drill that down into the detailed views needed for understanding uh, everything from packet loss to utilization within the environment. Finally, as part of the most recent and new capabilities, and we'll touch on that, we've included Alerta, which allows us to better sort and manage the alerts within the environment. And I'll touch on the detail there in a few seconds. Um, it's a purpose-built tool chain for MCP. 
it combines all of the components and the capabilities of what's available within the open source community today with the integration and the understanding of cloud environments all distilled down into a package that allows you to gain that visibility and continue to understand what's happening with new environments. Provides us proactive monitoring so we can start to predict the state of our environments and where potentially we will have change. And then it's tightly integrated to drivetrain so that anytime we deploy a new software component with drivetrain, we're able to include the immediate setup of the monitoring of those components and hardware component um, of those components into Stacklight. So there's no disconnect between the visibility of your environment and the deployment and management of your environment. Alerta. What Alerta does is it provides us a deeper view on all the triggered events within the environment. We can then deduplicate and visualize those events and manage those events so that we understand what the critical events are versus non-critical events versus just need to know events. Um, we're able to search and sort through all the events and then acknowledge those events by the operational teams, ensuring that we understand that somebody is looking at these problems and dealing with them uh, in a clear visual way um, tied to all of the data coming in through your environments. And in a very large complex environment with a large number of sources, this vastly simplifies your understanding. Furthermore, um, as part of Stacklight, we've included the historical trend analysis now. Uh, this is a new feature. Uh, we're able to down sample the data in such a way that we can now keep data for a much longer period of time without necessarily needing large amounts of storage and storage space within our environments. Uh, we can use this information to understand capacity change over time and other trends within our environments, as well as the ongoing health of our environments um, for multiple platforms as well. Um, what we've also included is the Grafana dashboards that allows us to view this data in such a way that to make it actually useful um, and provide those trending reports. As part of Stacklight, we've made a number of usability uh, enhancements. We're collecting against more of the subsystems and more data from the subsystems deployed by Drivetrain and managed by Drivetrain. We've included a number of new dashboards providing roll-up information and information at a glance within your environments, um, as well as a number of more detailed dashboards useful for creating troubleshooting um, and understanding what's happening in the environment without you having to go and create those from scratch. Obviously, we also provide for the ability for you to create your own detailed um, dashboards as necessary for your environments. Okay, we seem to have gotten through that pretty quickly. Um, okay, well, you know, we do have some questions. Good. That we can go through. So, um, so let's talk about this. Uh, how, so first of all, um, if you have questions, if you have not answered, asked your questions yet, um, please go ahead and drop them in the questions panel. But we do have a few already. So um, how do how we have a question that says, how do we create new dashboards? So those new dashboards can be either defined through um, Kibana itself, or you can define them as code within the drive training infrastructure. Okay, and so that would be, so those dashboards then, if I'm taking this correctly, would be managed the same way as the rest of the infrastructure. That's correct. Gotcha. Okay. Um, what does again, a full, I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry, Nick. Um, again, the, the entire goal of everything we've done within MCP and within Drivetrain and Stacklight is to be able to, to 
control and manage everything through the model-driven architecture. Thereby, we start always with the view that everything needs to be defined within um, as code. So all the dashboards are available. You can take the existing dashboards that are defined there, modify them for your own needs, um, and push them out to your environment. Um, we're assuming that people are going to have multiple environments and want to keep those in sync. And the best way to do that is through this, through the definition of that as code. Gotcha. Um, is the dashboard default with MCP setup? Yes. Okay. It is. Uh, mm -hmm. That's simple enough. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, there's not really a more complex answer to provide there. It, it is defaulted. Um, we, as I mentioned, we provide a number of very standardized dashboards um, based on our experience. And we're constantly, as we're getting feedback from customers and um, our own internal usage, and I should point out that we use Stacklight internally for our managed operations customers. Um, and we often push the new features to ourselves first before they go out to customers to validate them. Um, so yeah, we, we're constantly creating new dashboards, um, taking input from our field teams, uh, and each release has new dashboards. Sometimes we don't we don't even we we, we don't even load them, we just include them. Got it. So um, do you know what uh, the plans are for supporting new versions of OpenStack? Yes, I do. Um, as part of our Q3 release, which will be the end of October, um, we will be providing full support for Queens at that stage. Um, and then Rocky will be early um, in the first half of next year. Got it, got it. Um, we will um, continue, sorry, I just want to add there if you don't mind, um, just a bit of color. We will continue to support uh, previous versions, typically to the point of N minus two, uh, to continue to support easy upgrade and easy updates from existing versions of OpenStack um, to the latest versions of OpenStack. Um, and part of our drivetrain product offering is the easy updates pipelines that will ease that process. Um, of making those those very complex, sometimes OpenStack upgrades, without impacting on your workloads. Got it. Uh, does MCP have an SDN feature or plugin for Open Daylight? We do support the community Open Daylight plugin for OpenStack. We do not provide support for ODL itself, um, but we do provide the ODL plugin um, for OpenStack. Got it. Um, in Prometheus downsampling, is there any information loss? Yes. Um, by the nature of downsampling, we are going to lose some of the levels of granularity. That is configurable. You can choose to maintain or downsample less. Um, it is a cascading solution. So there is a, a short-term storage Prometheus, which maintains a large amount of the data, uh, a very, very granular for a shorter period of time, just because of the sh sheer amount of storage needed. Um, the dance sampling essentially increases the time between samples. So there will be some loss of granularity. Um, but as I say, that is configurable. If you, if you want to invest in the storage, um, we, can, we can set that to be the same as um, the non-dance sample data. Got it. Um, when you say single sign-on, is that cross-cloud? Yes. So let me touch a little bit more about how Keycloak works. Within each cloud deployment, and we define a cloud deployment as that of a single control plane. So you can have multiple cloud deployments behind a single um, stack light, a uh, single drivetrain deployment. Um, the Keycloak components then federate the identity management either providing all the identity information within Keycloak itself or through a federation to a existing um, identity management solution like, for example, Microsoft AD um, or whatever enterprise authentication solution you have. So we do provide, um, the, for example, you know, various of the open source like AAuth and other um, authentication mechanisms. 
Um, what does full, a full managed version of Kubernetes actually mean? <laughs> So Kubernetes, I mean, we always hear this, Kubernetes you can go and just download, um, and that's great. But you still need to deploy an operating system to the, to the compute node, to the infrastructure. You have to configure the control plane. You have to include all the correct ingress controllers, the load balancing. You have to configure that to um, inter integrate with the rest of your infrastructure, so routers, switches, firewalls, all the various other components. Um, you then want to be able to, uh, some enterprises we've, we've discovered want to be able to do upgrades in place of the Kubernetes components, um, plus ensure that all the integration of the operating system and updates to the operating system, for example, etcd and, uh, sorry, Docker and etcd also need to be updated on a regular basis. Um, and it's not necessarily always viable to move the workloads around to achieve that. This allows us, the managed solution allows us to perform upgrades, make configuration changes, once again in a controlled way, so we have that visibility. Um, over hundreds of nodes running uh, Kubernetes, as well as to control where the control plane components are, where the SDN components, we provide um, Kubernetes integration, sorry, open control integration to Kubernetes. Um, so we're able to then provide all that integration out of the box and manage all of that integration. All right. Well, um, I think we've come to the end. If anyone has any questions, now is the time. Uh, while we give people a sort of uh, last chance to, uh, to, to add questions, um, Sean, what, what is your sort of main takeaway? as far as um, what the new features are and, and what you're really looking forward to coming down the line? My main takeaway for the new features is quality, stability, and scale. I know that's more than one. Um, we are providing you with the ability to achieve all of those within your environment in a flexible way um, to meet your needs. And that, that is the biggest and most powerful thing that we can add to the product as it stands today. Coming down the road um, for MCP is more integration, um, easier updates. Uh, we, we're working extremely hard to, to make seamless updates a reality in the infrastructure world so that you don't need to move workloads around um, that you can place a high level of reliance upon your environments, um, regardless of the type of workload. Um, and I think the, the big changes coming ahead into the future is the expansion of infrastructure as code concept to all levels of the data center, allowing us to provide you with a multi-cloud environment where you can manage many, many hundreds of clouds um, over many, many locations from a central point, um, those are the big advantages coming down the road. Um, and look, watch the space our multi-cloud solutions um, beyond uh, over the multi-region will be launching soon. I'm, I'm going to agree with that. I'm going to ask you to go to the next slide, Sean, which has the links that people need. Um, so uh, this obviously has information where you can get more uh, more information on what we're doing and the new deployment guide and so on and so forth. Uh, right, so I think, uh, oh wait, we have, we have more questions. We have more questions. Um, Drivetrain provides a CI CD pipeline for the infrastructure itself. Can it be also, can it also be used for pipelines delivering applications workloads? Yes, it can. Um, it's infinitely, uh, customizable, all the same concepts that you use to define um, pipelines and jobs as code within your infrastructure components can be used to deliver application components. It is in fact how we deliver the components for things like OpenStack and all the workloads that we push and components that you push on top of Kubernetes. Um, and that's exactly what it's designed to do, is to be that central point of um, access for your environment. Uh, I also would suggest going to have a look at the Mantis MAP um, 
releases that we've done recently. That which brings us to our next question, which was any word about Spinnaker. So, <laughs> so Marantis does have a, pro, uh, a platform called Marantis Application Platform, which is based around Spinnaker, um, which provides us the, Spinnaker, the power of Spinnaker to do complex um, cloud native application deployment um, on top of your cloud environment in a multi-cloud um, way. So we can, with Spinnaker today, we can, and the MAP platform, we can support um, pushing to Google Cloud, AWS, as well as an OpenStack um, cloud, as well as any of the Kubernetes cloud offerings that you that are out there, both public and private. Excellent. All right. Well, um, I. I guess that is it. So I want to thank you, Sean, for um, taking the time out. I know that you were extremely busy. And, and I want to thank everyone who joined us here today because we know that you are just as busy, if not busier. So uh, thank you all very much. And we will see you next time. Have a great day. Thank you very much.